okay so in this session i'll i'm discussing about the ali idox concept and before getting into the ali idox concept we have to understand first of all why we need to uh, know the ali idox concept so ali idox is a concept in which basically it is used to uh, get the data from non sap systems to sap system so sap from non sap to sap we have various types of uh, in data distribution non sap to sap is one thing SAP to SAP is one thing, SAP to SAP is one kind of a data distribution that we have and SAP to non-SAP. So we need to understand uh, why exactly we need to, most of the times why exactly we need to use uh, ALE IDOX is what we need to understand. So most of the times to get the data in mutual way, so SAP to SAP, SAP to non-SAP systems or sometimes SAP to SAP systems. Now, if we observe here in this, in this uh, last two, la are you able to see my screen? Yeah, so here in, in this particular, uh, the last two uh, uh, scenarios, in that we have to have the data from SAP to non-SAP and non-SAP to SAP. Uh, mutually, we have to send and receive the data. In that scenario, we'll be taking, we'll be normally, uh, you know, uh, adopting the concept of ALE IDOX. ALE IDOX, uh, before ALE IDOX, we had something called EDI concept. And a non-SAP to SAP, or uh, SAP to SAP, we, the most famous concept that we have is, first one is RFC. RFC in the sense remote function call. This remote function call is basically used for non SAP to SAP systems. A remote function call is basically used for SAP to SAP data distribution. And then we have EDI, electronic, electronic data interchange, electronic data interchange. And then we have ALE, ALE in the sense application, linking and enabling. Now here uh, we must understand that RFC is a concept with which we can also communicate between non-SAP to SAP as well. But uh, we have to have a middleware. For all these topics we need to have a middleware. Middleware is a, con middleware is a software which can, which can understand both the softwares, which can understand both the language. Like, if it is from Java to SAP, the middleware software which we introduce between these two softwares have to be, uh, it, it should be like, uh, it should understand Java as well as SAP. So, uh, now um, in, the, in this like, you know, RFC, for RFC what we do is, since it's from SAP to SAP, we, will, we need not have uh, any middleware here. For SAP to SAP conversions, we need not have any middleware. Just we need to enable the remote function call. For enabling remote function call, what we need to do is, we need to go for, we, we need to enable the re remote function call in SM30, SM59 transaction code, which we are going to discuss in the, uh, when we are doing that concept. So RFC, remote function call, EDI is electronic. Electronic data interchange was started in, EDI was started in a concept in a, in a year called 1964. So 1964, in 1964 it was started and this was not by SAP, EDI was not by SAP, it was started by independent European uh, Union and then it was taken as a standard for exchange of data. For example, previously before this EDI concept was established, a notepad data, uh, a notepad data in one particular uh, file cannot be read in another file. For example. If you create a, a notepad in one system, that da same data cannot be cannot be read in another system. Uh, that was the problem at the time. So EDI enabled us to get the data from one system to another system and uh, very effectively. Like if you create a notepad in one system, then it can be open in another system. That's what uh, we have done in European uh, I mean e EDI. So then we have uh, ALE IDOCs, ALE concepts. So ALE is something which is uh, application linking and enabling which was started in 1980s 
this was sap's proprietary concept to uh, you know exchange the data from sap to non sap and non sap to sap system but of course we need a middleware in this so uh, some of the clients what they said is like you know for exchanging of data again we have to buy the middleware means this middleware is not you know, you know um, support i mean like not provided by sap company so we need to we need to purchase this middleware from some other companies other than sap like you have to purchase it from some companies like for example if tcs has you know uh, successfully created a middleware to exchange the data from java to sap then that data then that particular system will be used as a middleware so uh, sap had faced lot of criticism because some companies some companies and organizations didn't wanted to purchase middlewares from uh, individual so software companies they just wanted to wanted sap to give that pro provide that uh, middlewares so sap came up with a solution called exchange infrastructure exchange infrastructure exchange infrastructure so exchange infrastructure is a concept in which we are getting the data from one system to another system uh, without middleware middleware in the sense here in the place of middlewares we have something called adapters 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 what exactly they do is they exchange the data they they act as middlewares so sap came up with a sub completely a different software just like bi is there just like bi is there and just like uh, we have uh, ecc server xi is a standalone software which is basically used to exchange the data between sap to non sap and non sap to sap wherein initially when they launched this xi they they came up with 14 adapters these 14 adapters are used for various adapters these 14 adapters are used for various connections between the systems like for example if you want to go for java we need to adapt one one adapter if you want to get the data from websites you need to go for another adapter it's it was like that and pi is process integration pi is process integration process integration is the advanced concept of xi so xi exchange infrastructure is something which we normally uh, use and after that we have process integration which is the advanced version the version change just like we have bw and bi uh, bw is the old concept and bi is the latest concept and again future again it will be called as bw but here in this case xi is now called as pi process integration and uh, this module is actually used to enable the data from one system to another system but most of the clients still prefer to go for ALE concept and uh, get the data because XI is a complete package that the company has to purchase which will have a lot of you know uh, expenses involved into it. I mean the complete software has to be purchased even if it is required for one to one data I mean Java to a Java to SAP only one particular scenario even then we have to purchase the entire package <coughs> but when it comes to but when it comes to uh, exchange of data with lot of systems if sap has to exchange the data with lot of other systems like uh, from uh, from java from websites uh, from you know uh, from uh, database oracle database and from you know uh, ms dos or lot of other systems are there from which we have getting the data into uh, into our ecc server or bi server then you will better go for xi or pi the latest version is pi which will which will exchange the data between that system and our our sap system and now edi is completely outdated because uh, this is something which is not created by sap and it was a way old uh, concept so sap came up with this, their own proprietary line concept called ale in in any in any in any of the cross applications this all things all these concepts will come under cross applications anything which is uh, you know interacting with uh, non sap to uh, different systems is called cross applications in the cross applications we have the data from let's say uh, the sending system the sending system is always called as outbound system receiving system is called sending system is called outbound system receiving receiving system called inbound system okay so this this is these are the basic uh, things that we have to understand like uh, a sending system and receiving system now 
if you have a sending system and a receiving system and between those two systems if we have established a connectivity at uh, that connectivity uh, that connectivity is uh, something called uh, uh, that connectivity is through ALE so ALE is like a bridge ALE is like a bridge so we have on the system A system B between these two systems uh, we have a bridge and that bridge is th that bridge can either be ALE or the concept of EDI and in this the data is packaged and sent in the form of AI doc okay so let me let me uh, let me let me uh, tell you a scenario wherein let's say we have system A and system B so system A system B we consider as your home and your office so from your home to office let's say in between we have uh, a river so if you cross a river you will go get you will go to your office so you have your home on the left side you have your uh, office on the right side and middle you have river so you, ha you, you, you we obviously have to have a bridge to pass that so that bridge which we establish is ALE once we establish the bridge uh, it's like you know you can use it day to day day, uh, uh, daily on a daily basis but when it comes to how do we send that see if you have a food in your hand you cannot take the food in your hand right so you have to have a container or a carrier that container or carrier will carry the uh, food from your home to your office similarly if you want to get the data from system a to system b the bridge has been established the bridge is ALE but the data has to be first fit into a container called IDOC so what is an IDOC? IDOC is an intermediate document intermediate document this intermediate document what exactly it will do is it will it will carry the data into it so we, we are just going to fill the data into the IDOC and send it from the one system to another system now from the BI point of view you are going to only receive the IDOC so we need to understand what is an IDOC what is ALE concept or whether we are using ALE or whether we are using EDI or whether we are using XI concept or we are using some other technology we need to be aware of it when we are getting the data from non SAP systems and from SAP systems we don't have to have worry about all these ALE errors because as we have already done the extraction from ECC we are just picking up the data from ECC server to BI server just by establishing a RFC connection but when it comes to if you want to extract the data directly from Java or some websites or something like that then we need to have the ALE docs in place so ALE docs first we'll establish the bridge and after establishing the bridge we have to you know get get the data in the form of a container and uh, in, in the form of a IDOC so IDOC is nothing but a container which will be filled with the data and that data will be will be you know again extracted in the receiving system so every IDOC let's say IDOC is like a container or a tiffin box okay so if you if you uh, if you consider IDOC as a tiffin box then the partitions in the partitions in that box is like you know you will have three boxes one we have uh, one, one, one in one in one box you have some curry and in other box you have some you know uh, rice or something like that so in in that way if you have partitions that partitions in the IDOC is called segment so there will be multiple segments here segment 1 segment 2 segment 3 and these segments what exactly it will happen is IDOC will have segments so the IDOC under the IDOC will have multiple segments and in the in the each segment will have fields field 1 field 2 something like that so field 1 field 2 so field 1 field 2 field 1 field 2 and in field 1 field 2 and all now uh, in segment 2 we can have other fields again so segment 2 so segment 2 we have the same kind of uh, fields we can have and what hap what happens here is segment 1 and segment 2 can be like you know material related data this can be material related and this can be something like vendor or customer related so both might not have any link or something like you know employees related so employee related data so this employee related data and material related data has no connection at all so that's the reason we are keeping that data in the different segments the segment one has some different data and segment two has another data and it has couple of fields all these things we can pack up wrap up into a single IDOC uh, based on from which system to which system we are sending it so if you are sending if you are sending the data from system A to system B all the 
single ad hoc will ha will harry will have all the segments and then we are going to